That portion of the planning report discusses section 1183 of your Norfolk County official plan, and that sets out the requirements for neighborhood plans. And there, there's a list, an alphabetical list of what's required. Now section A, which is discussed on page 18 of the report, now in the report it's called, it's called section V, as in valley, but it really should be A, because that's what it's referred to in your Norfolk County official plan. So section A says it identifies as a North Dover Mills planning area as a planning area. So we, this is what's brought us here today. Section B then has a list of items to be addressed. C talks about encouragement of sustainable design. D talks who can initiate a, a, a neighborhood plan and so on. It gets down to uh, E, which says that the county can actually waive a neighborhood plan. And although we haven't applied for that, we think that may actually be appropriate here. F talks about the terms of reference, and G talks to about the cost to be shared by landowners within the area. Now in this case, our client is the only active developer in the area, so he is paying all the costs, even though section G says costs are to be shared by the landowners. But the most important thing that I want you to, to recognize is what and again, this is what your Norfolk County official plan says about neighborhood plans. In section G, it says, notwithstanding this policy, development of an individual site, so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about developing these lands separately from the balance lands. Development of an individual site may be permitted provided it has been demonstrated that such development will not preclude the orderly development of the neighborhood planning area. So we have to be able to show you that what we're going to do is not going to preclude other people in the area from developing. That's your official plan policy. If we meet that test, then we should be able to develop this property independently because it says an individual site may be permitted to develop. If you look on the planner's report on page 20, partway down, there's um, just above the number of bullets, there's this comment from staff. Staff are satisfied that the developer has provided staff with enough detail to ensure orderly development which would not preclude future logical development from taking place. So it would seem to me that what staff has said is that we meet that test in the official plan. If there's any concern about precluding orderly development, your staff has said that we've provided you with enough information so that they're confident we will not preclude orderly development. That's in the staff report, and you heard your planner tell you that as part of her verbal report today. There, if you're having a trouble finding that on page 20, that's a photocopy of page 20, and the section that I'm referring to is highlighted there to help you find it. So where does this leave us? This says the Norfolk County official plan test for a site proceeding on its own has been satisfied. So the developer has provided the detail to confirm the development is not precluding orderly development. That test has been met. Your planner, planner has said that, and you're, they've written that in the report. So in our minds, the requirements of the, of the neighborhood plan have been satisfied. This effort to ensure that we're not precluding other people from developing has been satisfied. That is the purpose of the, of the secondary plan. Therefore, we've satisfied the requirements of the secondary plan, and we should now move on to step two in that flowchart, which is draft plan of subdivision, which is focusing your engineering on your specific lands, not on the whole study area of the secondary plan. So it is our contention that no further engineering study is required on the adjacent lands. So if there are water main upgrades required to service other lands, the lands way over by the cockshut that are not required for our land, that should be addressed by that developer if they ever come forward. 
We don't think that we should have to be looking at pumping station upgrades and force main sizing and all these things for, de for development. We've identified that those things are required, but we don't think that we should have to design them, so to speak, for other properties that don't even have an application before you because we've proven that, as your planner has said, that we are not precluding orderly development. The next step is a draft plan of subdivision, and that's where we'll focus our engineering studies on our subject lands, not on the adjacent lands. But staff is requesting this more study on the adjacent lands. And again, if you look in the amendment, which is buried back in, way back in your agenda somewhere on page two, this clause is proposed to be inserted into the official plan that the neighborhood plan area be subject to a draft plan approval, of course, and zoning applications, of course, which shall be required to provide conceptual area servicing report that includes all lands in the secondary plan area. But well, we believe we've already addressed that as part of the secondary plan, and we should move on to the draft plan, a subdivision. What staff is kind of doing here is taking what's, what's a, a secondary plan issue and pushing it into the draft plan stage. We're saying, no, we've met the test. We've met the test for your Norfolk, Norfolk County official plan. We've, we've ensured that orderly development is possible. Let's move on and design our own site. This is the page again out of your, that is in, buried back in your agenda. And the yellow section is highlighted that says that includes all lands in the secondary plan. So again, staff have, uh, planning staff and the report uh, say we've, we've satisfied this test for adjacent lands and we request that no more engineering be done on the adjacent lands, but that it be focused on our land. That doesn't say that when we look at drainage that we're gonna to have to ensure that the design for our subdivision will accommodate our, our immediate neighbors. What it does say is, if you own two farms to the, to the east, way over by the cockshut, that we shouldn't have to find a detailed stormwater design to solve your development problem now. Okay. Dover West neighborhood plan. What we're talking about is the North Dover Mills planning area. There's one exactly the same on the other side of town over by uh, the Blue Line Road and Highway 6 and Radical Road, those roads bound this Dover West neighborhood plan. It's the same situation. There's multiple developers there. Um, they have a big planning area, much larger than this one. It's interesting that although no developer has come forward there with a proposal, that the county now is preparing to issue an RFP to do all these planning studies and that Norfolk County has budgeted, according to your staff tells me, somewhere between forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, Norfolk County has budgeted for the county to pay for planning studies, engineering studies, all these studies. And those are the same studies that Mr. Eggink is being asked to finance completely on his own. Why? Because he came forward and has, has an application in front of you. So he's paying the full shot. On the other side of Port Dover, you have people there who have land who have not even brought an application forward, as I understand, but the county is being proactive there and in initiating the secondary plan at the county's expense. It seems to me that there's a little bit of inequity there, that uh, Mr. Eggink is being asked to do all this engineering work on other people's lands for their development, and they don't have an application in front of them either. So the neighbors to the west, in our planning area, they've confirmed they don't want to develop their sites. Again, why would this developer spend a lot of money investigating engineering solutions for those lands when those people have said they don't want to develop and at this developer's cost? Planners have said on page two, and you heard it tonight, the county has discussed options with other landowners in the Dover, North Dover Mills area with no success for inclusive development. What that really means is no one else wants to develop in this area. So why are, we, why are we gonna do more engineering study? We've got three requests, and they're on this sheet, this summary sheet that I've handed out. The first request is refer this report back to staff and ask them to revise the report and bring it back to council. It's not very often that I stand here and ask you to defer something. We've been doing this for a year and a half, but we, it's important that we get this right. 
We want you to give staff specific direction on what needs to happen in this report. And one is delete that road connection to the Lawrence lands and match the mapping to the road pattern on the subdivision layout that has been envisioned. Otherwise, we're going to be back here with the subdivision application and we're also going to have to come back and amend this mapping because it doesn't match. That needs to be fixed. The other thing we're asking you to do is delete this requirement for further engineering study on the other lands and limit the engineering work only to the subject lands. That again, I showed you the page. It's found in the official plan amendment on page two. And at actually, I, th I think the next slide might, no, it doesn't, the next slide doesn't help me. I showed you that slide where it talks about conceptual servicing of all the subject lands. So I've gone on here for way more than my uh, allotted time, I'm sure, but a lot of information here. It's important to us that we get this right so that when we come back with a draft plan, a subdivision application, uh, we can get an approval and move forward. So thank you. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Valley. <coughs> Councillor Broughton, please. Thank you, Mayor Luke. John, I uh, totally understand your uh, frustration somewhat. Um, tells me the same problem that I've seen over and over again, where the urban boundaries are drawn in the wrong spot. Nobody looks at where the urban boundaries should be versus where they've drawn them. And that's typical right across this county. Um, my question, I guess, to you is, uh, and what you've said is uh, similar to what happened right here on the Queensway for years. Multiple owners, nobody wants to agree what should be done or you can't get through one person's property and so forth. But anyways, my question is this. When you looked at uh, the Lawrence property, where, where does it come into your catchment areas for sanitary and storm? So the... Uh, through the, the not not the well okay where did, what, what how much of Lawrence's land comes into your catchment for storm and sanitary? So the the, the the analysis we did yeah. of sanitary sewer yeah. we looked at the flow that we expect to generate on the on Eggings land. Yeah. We looked at your master servicing plan, which talks about the flows that are. Uh, calculated by your consultants at the downstream pumping station. We reviewed those, those existing flows at the pumping station. We got a little bit different number, but we were pretty close. We added the two of them together and found that the pumping station is basically at capacity with this land. And that if you went to then add the Lawrence lands or the lands to the, the Lawrence lands are to the west, if you add the, the other lands to the east, that that pumping station suddenly would be surcharged. Similarly, the, the route for storms or sanitary sewer outlet is through the Egg Inc. subdivision and then through the older subdivisions to the south leading down to the Ryersea pumping station. And, and those sewers are also max, uh, maxed out by this proposal. So this proposal can be serviced, but it basically fills the pipes and it fills the pumping station. So our sanitary drainage area, to answer your question, yeah. is the subject lands, period. Okay, but you didn't answer my question. So how much of the catchment area for sanitary, have you looked at the rest of Lawrence's? Like, does it come in or no. does it go the other way? Well, by, ca by capacity way? of the downstream, there's not capacity for it, so it wouldn't be included. It'd have to go another way. Yes, or there would have to be, uh, presumably for the lands to the east over by the Cockshut, there would be the need to bring a new sanitary sewer up the Cockshut Road to service those lands because the existing sewers were not designed to accommodate them. Big so, cost for somebody. Big cost down the road for, for somebody. So, if I may, when they, what's the name of that road we just rebuilt there, Mr. Wells? It's uh, Prospect. So, Was there any, were there services storm or sanitary put in there or water to come up to service any of that? My understanding is the sanitary sewer, uh, Lee Robinson could correct me, but I don't think there were any improvements made to the sanitary. Uh, the water was improved, I, I believe. The storm was improved, but the storm was not sized for this catchment area. Okay, my next question deals with storm, and that is I've been there I'd be a couple of years ago now, but I got called down there. And the lands, I'm going to call it south 
south of Dover Mills Road, uh, in a heavy storm, water laid all over the backyards of some of those properties. So, where is your catchment area? How are you going to deal with that storm, just on a preliminary basis? Like, are you looking at a municipal drain, or, or is there no. road sewers in place, or how, you, how are you going to deal with that? And will you, I, I know you can put ponds in upstream, but are you going to address the flooding in those backyards at all, or is this going to be a cutoff? Okay, so there's, I think what we're talking about are the properties down in this area. This is Dover Mills Road along here, and this is yep. Prospect Street. Yep. I think we're talking about houses down in this area. That's correct. So our firm, ironically, for Mr. Egink, is, is actually back and forth with Public Works right now on the final design of a phase of this development right in here. And this drainage issue that you're talking about, uh, Councillor Brunton, is something that's being thoroughly investigated and, and there's a lot of back and forth on how to resolve that. Okay. The irony of the whole situation is this water that's flooding these people out is in part or majority coming from the lands that we're talking about tonight. And that the plan is, to, there's the stormwater pond there yeah. and this is a stream that was, is our proposed outlet. So this water which today comes down here and causes these people grief once this subdivision is developed, will be di instead diverted here to a stormwater pond and then into the gotcha. stream, gotcha. in essence, cutting it off from c creating the problems that these people are experiencing today. Great, great. So that addresses it. Very good. Um, I understand your other problems, and we'll see where we go. So, thank you. Any more questions for Mr. Valley, Councillor Wells? Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, first of all, I'd like to say to Mr. Uh, uh, Valley, I'm very pleased with uh, your client's uh, work that he has done between Homer and Maple. The development in Port Dover is certainly a wonderful asset, many variety of different color styles of homes, and the brick is wonderful. He does, he's a great developer, so I'm not complaining about that at all. And that's why I am a little bit concerned, though, with regard to the fact that he or you are not interested in the stub only because my biggest fear is that people will want to access uh, Teesdale Road to get to Simcoe. And what they will do is go through Kamel. And that road has never been designed for heavy traffic. And that's my biggest fear about the suburbs. Not that he wouldn't do a good job, but that's my fear. And when you don't have another access to take the people away from Kamel, that's where they're gonna go. And then the phone's gonna ring and you won't be there to answer it. <laughs> Thank you. All I could say to you, Councillor Wells, is that uh, the planning documents that we have show this connection right here, which is a, there's an arterial road plan that goes all the way from the cockshut across all these farms, across the subject lands, connects to Prospect here, and that would be one uh, outlet. There'd be another one here, 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 this one, making this stub connection here to the Lawrence lands does absolutely nothing to alleviate any traffic flow on any adjacent street, whether it's, be, whether it's this road through Clonmel or whether it's up to Teesdale, because this is a dead end. There's no way currently to get a road from here over to Teesdale because this land up here you'd have to go through is not in the urban area. So all this stub is doing is providing services and road access to this little piece of the Lawrence land for maybe some form of future development. But it doesn't provide another traffic outlet because it can't be connected to Tisdale until the larger farm comes along and can be developed in conjunction with this little piece. However, Councillors who've been sitting around the table know all the difficulties with justifying an urban boundary expansion. We talked about just a few minutes ago the Dover West neighborhood plan, which will accommodate thousands of homes. So is it in the 20-year forecast that Dover needs a thousand, more than a thousand more homes in addition to what you've already approved? Is that in the 20-year forecast? If it's not, then this development and expansion and this boundary up here is a long way away. 
So making a connection here or not making a connection has no impact on external traffic because it does not provide an outlet for traffic to get to any street. It's a dead end. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mayor Luke. Uh, through you to the deputation, you mentioned that the, there was the Dover West plan that county's financing at around $50,000, <clears> and you're saying there are no developers that you know of coming forward there. Would that money be better spent to fix this area? Well, it, it may be. Um, it just seems, it just seems, I think you're sensing the inequity that we're feeling here. Yeah, that we're being asked to do the engineering study on lands that we don't own, uh, where the county's doing those studies on the other side of town. Right. And if there is no development opportunities there on the books right now, this, this is ready to move ahead fairly, fairly quickly. Uh, I, I guess one of the things I'd like to ask you, Mr. Valley, is as an engineer, sometimes when I'm here and I see these subdivisions go forward, I struggle to see that the county doesn't actually help developers very much. And what I mean by that is your roadways. Traffic's always a problem, so I don't know why we wouldn't put a road in from, say, Cockshut to Tisdale and relieve the problem. We, we could have did it in, in Waterford before and one of your other de developments. We have the ability to do that. It builds houses, opens up tracks for development, and yet it doesn't never happen that way. Do you know why? The, the municipal standard is the cost of development are borne by the developer. Right, but at some point in time, our forefathers had the foresight to put in concessions and quarter lines, and they didn't pay for that. So why wouldn't we, because if we need to open up lands, why wouldn't we do that? The grid system works. This whole running around subdivisions doesn't get you out of your house and then causes a mess it's elsewhere down the road, it seems to me. Would, would a plan like this address that? The plan, like the secondary plan that the county's going to issue, the RFP for Dover West, would do a lot of the work, same work that we've already done, and it would hopefully address uh, engineering. There are big in engineering challenges on that piece of property. We've already looked at it for other developers. So we're aware of those constraints. So there are... There is the need in that case for cooperative solutions to find a way to get sanitary sewage, for example, from the west side of Port Dover through a whole bunch of pumping stations across the river and up to your sewage plant. That's a major, a major challenge for that, which will require multiple developers. The difference here is that you've got one developer who can go today based on the capacities of your existing infrastructure. So I would say, then why not let him move forward with that and recognize that if there are, are expenditures to be made in the future, then those would be either county supported through budgeting or something or trunk main improvement or whatever, or expenditure of that developer should he ever come forward. Okay, I like that idea, but I'm not sure that I want to see everybody put in new roads and then we go rip it up because we need a bigger drainage thing, say, a year from now when the person who owns land D wants to develop another 100 houses. Then we're, we're not looking at the big picture that way either, right? So I, th I think what you have to, again, understand is that the, the egging proposal does not involve building a whole bunch of e external infrastructure it's already there we're just going to connect to it the water mains are there the sewers are there all that stuff is there mm -hmm. it's not as if we're upgrading stuff just to service our land and that upgrade won't work for somebody else we're just taking advantage of this of the infrastructure that's already in the ground recognizing of course that if somebody else comes along in 20 years to do a development that there will be no capacity left in those pipes at that time, and there, then there will be a need to upgrade. But those upgrades, we're, we're, we're not going to do what you talked about. We're not going to put in new infrastructure that will only service our land and won't be big enough for others. What we are going to do is use the infrastructure 
and ironically a lot of which Mr. Regink paid for in his previous phases of development, we're going to use that infrastructure to its fullest capacity to develop these lands, make use of what's already in the ground. Okay, thank you. And my last thing has to do with the Lawrence Stub, I guess. We're doing our official plan review right now. Why wouldn't we move that boundary right now? You were part of the talks. You're working with the developer. We've moved some of the boundaries along and added them. Why wouldn't we have added more of that or at least deleted that annoyance? I think you've got, you've got an excellent idea. Mr. Lawrence may have a different opinion mm -hmm. on that matter. He may not like having his land removed from the urban boundary, or he may think that's a great idea. If he doesn't want to develop, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But this is something that is, Councillor Brunton kind of alluded to this earlier, this is a challenge with official plans, is that there's all kinds of land that is designated for urban development that has enormous servicing challenges to it, and may, as a result, never develop. But it's holding it, it on your books. It's development land that's available, even if it's virtually in, unfeasible to, to service. But on the books, it's available land for residential development and therefore is used to justify no more urban boundary expansions. I agree. Lots, too. Thank you. Anything further to Mr. Valley? Go ahead. Sorry, I did ask you about the sanitary. Where, where is the outlet, sorry, for your sanitary on here? Is it that first road east of, uh, Pros east of Prospect? Is that your connection? It is. Uh, this is our land here. We're coming down here, uh, and then we're coming. It's very hard to see on this map, but down, yeah. down through here. Gotcha. And then uh, on the streets to the south, down to the Ryerson pumping station. Okay, and that's where you say it, it maxes out. Yes. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Thank you, Mr. Valley. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Welcome, Mayor. Mr. Lawrence. When you're ready, you can fire away. Mr. Mayor, Councillors, uh, I'm not in... Uh, not, I'm in favor of the application, but I'm not. If you looked on page one, it talks about joining Tisdale to the cockshut, which I think is a very smart idea. It, as he says, the road stop, I understand the road stop in that small piece, but we are going to make an application to put in another approximately 15 acres to the north of that piece on our land, which would coincide with his subdivision. And you could easily put a stub to the north. If you if you uh, did that, eventually you could have it. Eventually you would have a, an access from Tisdale to the Cockshut, or at least now you could go from the new subdivision to the Tisdale. The way it is now, people leaving that subdivision are going to come on to Prospect or Dover Mills. If you're going north, we'll say to Simcoe. Where are you going to go? Clonmel Lane, the shortest the shortest route. And that's really foolish. I think that, you know, uh, we are making an application to improve it. I know it's not there now, but I think it's very foolish to go ahead with this without thinking of putting that road across from Cockshut to Tisdale a bit, whenever, you know. But if we, I hope you can understand that part about it. And uh, I find it very strange uh, uh, that Mr. Valley said they're right at their limit of sewers. You mean if they had one extra house in there, they couldn't service it, or uh, it, how do you get right to your limit? I'd like to know that uh, answer to that one. Um, other than that, we're we're not in favor of it, not against the subdivision. But if you had that map up again, the original map of Mr. Valley's, you uh, I don't know where it is now. Plant, okay. If you see that road in that circle to the north, uh, either like e that one, like next one up, up farther, there, either one, if you took that one there and run it into our land, there's your answer there. You, you cut all that traffic out of Clonmel Lane, quite simply.
And I do, I do believe we should have a road stub into our property. Anything further, Mr. Lawrence? No, I, I, I don't know this councillor's name, but I... You I don't do want to know. It. Just keep talking. <laughs> I do agree with what he says. It's Councillor Height. Okay, Councillor Height. I, you're going to uh, create... The way it is now, you're going to create a lot of traffic heading that way, which a lot of it's going to go the opposite way, which means Clonmel, which is a really a very small street. You know, so uh, if you went the other way, you'd be planning in the future, maybe 30 years before they ever hit over there, it will go one day. You know, it will go to, to, to the Cockshut and to Tisdale eventually. So I think that should be done now and not later. Are you open for questions? Sure. I think I saw Councillor Columbus first and then Brunton. Yep, Bob, yes. when do you envision developing your land? What am I going to do? When? When, when do you envision developing your land? Well, like we, you've, we got the small parcel, one hectare or something. Yes. And then there's the larger parcel. Yeah, we have about 35 acres, and we're interested in putting, I'm just guessing, on approximately 15 or 16 acres into the, the urban boundary if possible. And we would make the application as soon as possible because this fall is apparently the review. So we would like to get it in for that reason. I guess it's too bad we didn't have that already right right now in, in the <laughs> Cards. But that, that is the reason for the stub, and then you could cut to Tisdale. So really, the county can't get across your land until it is, until you're ready to, to uh, go forward. We're ready with it. We'll go ahead. We, we have no problem with that. Well, perhaps you can maybe speak further with uh, Mr. Valley and the Aggings. Mm -hmm. I think that would help well, us a lot. Sure. I have no problem with that. The only thing is, I, I do think, you can't take that stub out of the application. It's got to be there. Maybe not where they want to put it, but it still has to be there in order to get to Tisdale Road so, and to keep the traffic from going the other way in the Klon Mount. Councillor Brunton. Thank you, Mayor Luke. Just listening. Uh, good to see you, Bob. Uh, <laughs> you too. Um, used to watch you run around the ball field a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Uh, just... Am I reading this right that you, you mentioned 15 acres you wanted to, you're outside the urban boundary with that? Yes. You this realize would, that? We, yes, we would be making an application to go into the urban boundary to allow that road to go across. But? As of now, it's not, no. But you don't have any sewage capacity or, you're, again, that's Mr. Valley. Just well, that's up, to, that's up to later on. I, I, I mean, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It doesn't mean we can't have the road go through there. Well, I guess if I understand this correct, then if you said, and I'm, I'm looking at that loop coming around, if you had a 66 foot or a 20 meter or whatever it is in metric, I guess 20 meter entrance to come across into your lands, you'd forego the, the section that is in the urban boundary down at the bottom? The, yes, I'd put it all together. Yeah, but there would be no stub there. Or no, just, no, of course not. Just one stub up to the north. And that without, was a, without a stub, though, I'm talking just an open, yes, whatever, 20 meter uh, lot that's vacant. Yes, for future development. Yes, which would be a long ways off if you're outside the urban boundary, and you might be taking everything towards uh, what's that road over towards the river? Is that Tisdale? Yes. Okay. It's a, just so I understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Height. Thank you, Mayor Duke. Could I ask staff to jump back to the other map? When we were on before. Yeah, the satellite view, the color one, yeah. Right there. So now when I look at that uh, through the mirror to the deputation, you talk about that stub, but if we put the road up a little further and go right from Tisdale all the way across, I guess that would split your property, and the southern part could be in the urban boundary. You yes. Put a road up higher. Yes. So we could actually maybe swap for some land for a urban boundary adjustment, official plan amendment. <laughs> <laughs> so that that would be something that you'd sure. be open to looking in. Of course. Because Lawrence Route Road does sound pretty good. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Please. 
Uh, Mr. Mayor, my, Mr. Lawrence has sort of answered my question, and I was going to say, when you first made, first made your comment about wanting to, to take about 15 acres of the northerly parcel and take it out of agricultural and put it into the urban boundary, yes. I assume it would be the, the 15 acres immediately north of the yes. little piece that we've yes. been talking it's, about. It's approximately three acres on the bottom. Which we're talking yes, about. Yes, 1.2 hectares. Yes. Almost so it would probably be another, I'm just guessing, 12 to go with it or 14. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. we, uh, okay, I think you've answered my question. Thank you. thank you. Any further questions for Mr. Lawrence? Hearing none, thank you, Robert. You may have a seat. Thank you. Is there anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Yes, sir, would you give us your name, please? My name is Brian Ogden. I live at 14 Hickory Court in Port Dover, which is part of the development last phase of Betty and George. And you're right, they do great developments, um, nice looking community, um, safe, just great. However, I do have a bit of um, some questions to relate to some of the issues raised by the last speaker, and that's regarding the transportation, broader transportation issues in the area. I bike, I walk, I'm retired like pretty much everybody in Georgia's subdivision. So we're all active users of the road network. And Dover Mills Road as it exists now is a, is a rural cross section, no shoulders, yep. um, ditches, um, no sidewalks, not a lot of traffic at this point in time. Prospect is another issue. Um, <laughs> prospect is scenic road, um, half urban, Half County has a wicked S curve down at the cockshot and, and a vertical curve that will kill you unless you pay attention and fair a lot of speed because that's a major road in and out of town. Yes. And then prospect up at Dover Mills comes in out of skew, doesn't come in at 90 degrees. And above that, part rural, part urban, an old sidewalk, vertical, horizontal and vertical curves, sight line issues. I'm sorry, I'm a retired transportation planner, so I'm sure your transportation engineer understands all the issues there. So with all the development that's gonna occur here, and it's not just George's development, I, I support George's um, development. I think it's required, he'll do an excellent job, and nor do I believe he should be responsible for broader issues because they're normally under the planning process, development process we have, we have shared by all the developers um, in the area who aren't willing to come forth at this point in time. But a lot of this traffic is going to feed down Prospect, going to No Frills, going up Tisdale, going to town. That's the hard reality. The traffic is going to funnel through there, an increasing amount of traffic, not just the hundred and 50 homes or 70 homes that develop in Georgia Valley's property, but the rest of it ultimately, and it and will occur, occur because it is, it is zoned. So it will occur at some point in time. So you end up, you know, with a, a dilemma. The roads, I don't consider Prospect particularly safe at this, uh, at this point in time. I try to avoid Dover Mills and Prospect, it just, I can't look in both directions and, you know, often enough to feel safe in making that turn. It's just not a lot of traffic. So you're, you have a bit of a dilemma here in moving forward because you don't want to create unsafe road conditions. That's a county liability. That's a taxpayer's liability. We all pay for this. We all pay for the infrastructure improvements. We, we pay for it. I pay for it in part when I buy a house from George. We all do, so we all, we all share this issue. So um, my only caution would be to think carefully on how you move forward with, with this, because I think staff raised a valid issue of a need of a broader overview, but George's planner raises a very valid issue that that really isn't, nor should be George's liability or, or financial issue but we all share it in the community in one way or another. Same thing goes for water and sewer. I think someone mentioned about water pressure. The one thing my neighbors all complain about is 
besides the dirt in the road, <laughs> is the water pressure. We all come from somewhere else, and the water pressure is quite a bit lower than all the other places that people come from. So again, you know, you have to be mindful of, of water and sewer, and again, that isn't directly George's issue. It's an issue we all share. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Brian? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak in support of this application? No, you're 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 not. Uh... I'm out of order. I know. I missed it by a second. <laughs> can I ask it after this gentleman's done? Chris, you can proceed. Yeah, Chris I'm... Van Passen, thank you. Chris Van Passen, I got to make sure you log that in case I want to talk about this later down in the process. But uh, I was going to hear come here to speak in favor of this, but with all the problems Mr. Valley identified, I'm not so sure it's a good idea anymore. But um, a lot of the talk was the talking about that little stub of the Lawrence property, and uh, it's part of the urban boundary now, and to access it, to put a stub of a road in, it just makes no sense. But to leave one open space in the new plan of subdivision, that in the future you leave 20 meters, that there can be a road to Tisdale, because, like, I don't know why I still get complaints from people in Dover, because that's supposed to be John's job, but what they don't want is 500 cars accessing the rest of the world from Prospect and Street. And um, that's where they're going to go. They're going to come out of a new subdivision. They're going to take the shortcut through Clonmel Lane that, by the way, has to be one of the most dangerous intersections that we have. It uh, comes out at a funny angle at the top of a hill on a curve. So I don't know how much you can get much worse than that. Um, and believe it or not, I'll, and I'm going to say I, this is what my, my uh, gut feeling is, a lot of the people that are buying homes in Norfolk County are moving here because it's the best place in the world to live, but they're not working here in Norfolk County. They're still working in Brantford, in Hamilton, in Burlington. So if I'm working in Burlington and I'm going to move down to lovely Norfolk County and I'm going to live in this beautiful subdivision that's uh, you know, well built because I've seen some of Mr. Egging's other work, and when I leave to go to work, do you think I'm going to go down, uh, I'm going to shoot up Tisdale and across on St. John's, and I'm going to get out of town the back way. And uh, the people on Clonmel Lane are not going to like that. Um, Mr. Ad uh, Valley identified that, you know, it would cost his client around $270,000 to put that little stub of a road in. Well, I would say that all you have to do is reconfigure sort of the lots stretch them out a little bit so you spare yourself that extra 20 meters. He'll have the same number of lots to sell. Just leave that space available. Uh, now, Mr. Lawrence has said they're looking at applying to extend that urban boundary, and, you know, you can look on the map. There is a natural break there with the, uh, the ditch, the water course, whatever you want to call it, sort of one of those things that makes sense. Be able to access this new subdivision from Tisdale Road and keep all the people on Prospect Street happy probably wouldn't be a bad idea. I think I rambled rather fast, rather long here, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. No, you're fine. Any questions for this gentleman? Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry, Councillor Wells, my apology. I just uh, congratulate you on getting my calls and keep getting them. <laughs> 583-2205, Mr. Wells' phone number. Don't forget to call him. So. Uh, this gentleman, are you wish to speak in favor? Uh, no, but I, I had a question regarding... Um, okay, I'll, uh, I'll get to you in a moment. Let me just... i got to follow this procedure. I'll get to you in a moment. Yeah, Thank you. Is there anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak in support of this application? Thank you. Uh, Carl Barath, I live at 80 Do yes, Dover Carl. Mills Road. Yes, Carl. Yes, thank you. Um, I guess I'm in support of it. I don't have a problem with it. It's going to go anyways. It's a development, right? That's what's going to happen. So, but my issue, when I read this, and I've always had this drainage problem in my backyard, and I read this report, and it says uh, proper drainage on subject lands should alleviate the problem. 
well, does should mean maybe, perhaps, we hope so? Like, I, I want an answer. Like, I'm still, since he started to develop behind me, the water has gotten worse in the last five, six years. Look, my little ditch that's three feet wide, and we have heavy rains, goes to 20 feet wide. My neighbor's sheds get flooded. And you, you uh, I'm a little nervous. Mr. Valley said about, they're still working on the drainage for the rest of the uh, subdivision in behind our property. I thought that was all worked out. Like, right now they've filled in the ravine and put a four inch pipe. And that ditch used to be six feet wide to handle all our water. <clears throat> and like, I'm hoping that that problem is gonna get solved. So anyways, that's why I, I'm up here just to, it's the drainage thing. I just have an issue with it. Yes. I'm hoping everything I've been told that it's going to get solved. So I guess that's, like I say, I don't have a problem with the <clears throat> development, but I'm still concerned about the drainage. Carl, I'm going to have, uh, when I finish my procedure here, get Mr. Valley to, to respond to your question. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in attendance who wishes to speak in support of this application? I'm now going to ask if there's anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in general or against the application. Sir, if you wish to come down, uh, you had a question or you wanted some clarification. Can I, can I if you could. Come, I do wish to come down. Can I wait a few minutes just to hear what other people say first, please? That's fair. Anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in opposition or in general to this application? You may come forward, thank you. And you can give us your name, please. Good evening, my name is Maria Paperni. I'm a new resident to Port Dover. This is Bernie? Paperni. Paperni, thank you. Thank you. And I would like to say that I just recently came across uh, that drawing of how the subdivision is going to um, transpire. And there's a lot of amendments that are being requested on the from the official plan. My concern is um, the traffic, which uh, everyone has mentioned how dangerous prospect could be. And the way that I see from the drawing, it looks like a fishbowl. You have one small little en entrance that's going to facilitate 200 or so families. And as I've heard other speakers mention that they're still working elsewhere and there's gonna be a rush to get out and to get onto the main highways all of a sudden, why not take, you know, the quickest route, the easiest route for them? So I think the traffic and the movement of people should be the first concern of the plan. Who cares how many houses you're going to put on? You, you don't want to put a house where people are landlocked that if there's an emergency, they can't even get out of their, out of their subdivision. There's one entrance from what I see on that drawing and it is a poor entrance at that. I live on Prospect, and um, so I see what's going on up and down there. I see people walking with their dogs, with their children, and that's what Prospect is, a street for relaxing and taking a leisurely walk. It's not the route to get to work. Having said that, that little opening might be, might be used as not an entrance, but maybe they could build houses and close off Prospect and not make that a, an in and an out to the subdivision and possibly open a roadway to Tisdale, to the Cockshut, and um, what's the other street there? Dover Mills. And have those main arteries that they are real roads compared to Prospect Street and have them developed as the arteries that have to be uh, used on a daily basis by many, many people. And as the, the community grows, there will be only more people that have to use that. So we have to look at the big picture and see what will work, not just for today, but for the future of Port Dover. And um, I was reading also that the uh, park allotment is much, much smaller than what is in the official plan. Let me say, Cash and Lou is not gonna do any of our children any good or our grandchildren. Cash and Lou might be, you know, a temporary 
cha-ching for the coffers today, but what will we gain from a park that's lost? Once it's gone, it's gone. We will never have that park opportunity again. So I think having um, a real consideration of the movement of the people, the use of the community and that space and have a park and the facilities for our children and future children um, of Port Dover and also develop it with that historic charm. People are coming from everywhere. I'm commuting to Mississauga um, back and forth for work. So we are, like this gentleman said, I haven't met him yet, but uh, he, you know, it's a great place to live. I'm still quite new and lots to learn. But I do know that one of the reasons I chose Port Dover is because it's smaller. We don't have the hustle and the bustle. You can usually get to the no frills and no time flat, right? So, so that is the charm, that's the appeal, that's why I come. If I'm gonna have to fight traffic just to get out of my neighborhood, why, why live here? Then I might as well stay, you know, 14 minutes from work instead of 90 minutes from work, right? So that is a big consideration and as we have a lot of retirees and, 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 um, and we do want to have growing families in Port Dover, I'm trying to get my daughter out here. Um, we, want to look at, we want to look at everything and not just one development, nothing wrong with development, I'm, you know, I'm for it, but I, I do see um, Prospect as a gem it's a historic part of Dover. It's got that little waterfall. I don't know the official name of it yet. Uh, Ivy's Dam, that's it. And I mean, people come from all over and they go, I've never seen anything like that. I go, it's amazing. It's, there it is. It's right there for you to enjoy. Why would you want to take that away? Why would you want to make Prospect a busy street? When uh, Main Street is closed, we get the overflow from, from Main Street onto Prospect. And it's not pretty. It's not good. So let's let's think of what what can be done so that they can that development can happen. But we can't amend the size of the park. We can't have one egress uh, and a and a poor egress at that. It's really a poor one. I've heard already so many people say how treacherous it is because it's all windy and tight and. And why not put some historic, maybe he can do some more upscale houses right on Prospect, so he help buffer his cost on the lower cost homes that are gonna be more internal. And so everything can sort of weigh itself out. Um, give, <clears throat> give consideration to, to the landscape that, that's there. And, 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 um, and think about the logical way. If somebody's, it's like a fishbowl. You've got one way in and then everybody's around. And I, don't, I think you had another map, the one without the skylights. I don't know which page it is on your, this one. Follow me a little bit. So on map six, you can see there's a curving line that comes right through the, through the parcel of land, and it goes to the end of Cockshut. Now, I don't know the timeline. All I know is the black area is, is the first phase, and that's probably what we're speaking of today. So where that black line ends, so that road ends on that imaginary wall. There's no road going through there to, the, to meet the Cockshut. So everyone from that line has to come out from that small egress that you're calling. What are they calling it exactly? This, what they're calling the stump. That's the stump. The official stub. It's not. A, it's not. This. It's. It's just. I. I come from an area that uh, was developed 35 years ago in Mississauga, and they called it the fishbowl. And I mean everything there, beautiful builders, beautiful homes, lovely gardens, everything. But when you have to get out of that subdivision, you know, you've, you know, when I moved in, it used to take me 10 minutes to get to work. 
And then it, they started developing because the roads and the infrastructure was not there. It took 15. Then it took 30. They got to an hour. And I said, this is ridiculous. I had to move out of that area just to get out of my home to get to the main roads because people were coming off of all the little streets, but there was only one way out. And if everyone has to be at work rough, roughly the same time, you have a traffic jam. I don't think Port Dover wants to be known for traffic jams. They're known for Friday the 13th. They're known for Ivy's Dam. They're known for beautiful Lake Erie and our perch. But I don't think um, traffic jam and confusion uh, is, part of, is part of the design. So that being said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not supporting his application as it is. It's not that I'm not supporting development. I just think that the park is very, very precious to our children, especially every, if you go into the city, you'll see that there's no green space left. And I've come out and there's a lot of people, we crave the green space, we crave the fresh air. And, and if we start at the beginning here, start taking away the parks and taking away the nature, how do you get that back? It's impossible. You can't put up a million dollar home or half a million dollar home and then at some point in the future expect someone to bulldoze it down to make a park head. So now is the time to take that into consideration and say, listen, we need a park. We need people to move around. They have to get in and out. We have to address, there's people that have water in their, on their properties. We have beautiful Silver Lake that still uh, is suffering and I'm too new to know, to know the full story, but I'd love to see that because I, when I go for my walks, I see so many young people with their fishing lines into the, over the bridge, into the Silver Lake fishing. I don't know how edible those fishes are, what they're doing with them, but just the fact that they're fishing, I think someone's gonna eat them. I don't think they're just catching and releasing. Um, what, what's the integrity? So we have to look at the whole thing as a community. We pay taxes and there's nothing wrong with using the money for the areas that need to be addressed and improved for the future. So basically, um, I think, I don't want to repeat myself, but I'm not, up, I'm not supporting the amendments as presented. Thank you, Mrs. Perperni. Uh, is there any questions for this lady? Again, thank, thank you, you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition or in, in general to this application? Thank you, and I see the hand at the back, so we'll... Hello, uh, my name's Heather Easton. Uh, my husband, Richard Easton, is here too. We live at 108 Prospect Street. Um, and actually, uh, Ms. Purdy, who was before me, actually brought up almost all the things that I wanted to address. So um, we feel very similarly about um, what's happening. Um, but I, I did just want to first um, ask about um, Mr. Valley's talking about that they only own this parcel and there's no plans for anything else. So um, any cost for further engineering, et cetera, should only concern this property, except on the that map here, which I have here, um, certainly it seems as though Mr. Egging is planning at some point to be purchasing all those lands because um, it lists all the densities of what they would be proposing. So, and in the, all the paperwork, they also talk about um, expanding that um, pond system, and it shows there on the map to go into that other parcel of land. So, I think it does seem a little bit, I don't know. Um, trying to pull the wool over our eyes, like, oh no, we're just talking about this parcel and the other stuff, oh, those people, they can deal with that at that time. I think there was certainly every intention of Mr. Egging to purchase this, all of this land, all the way up to the cockshut. <clears throat> so I do think um, that those costs should be uh, incurred if that's the intention. Um, Egging Homes is not a small uh, company, um, so it's not like I should feel sorry for them having to spend the money to put into the, inf the the studies um, to happen now in the event that they are able to purchase all that land and develop all the rest of it. Um, also, uh, I am one of the people that walk around town with my dogs, with my kids. My kids fish at Ivy's Dam, over at Meisner's Dam. Um, I'm actually the person uh, that put in the please slow down signs along Prospect Street. 
um, that I got from my old counselor in Toronto. Um, we moved from Toronto. Uh, to me, this was moving to the sticks. I knew nothing about where this was. Uh, my husband found this beautiful home, the McNeely House <clears throat> on 108. And I said, and we said, we 